Okay, hopefully you all heard that. I got the recording on. It came through. Very good. Well, welcome everyone once again. Uh, glad you joined with us today in this beautiful evening, um, wherever you might be. And let me see if I can move us along. Uh, let's begin with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that you have opened heaven to us, but have also given us this wonderful good news to proclaim of the forgiveness of sins and life eternal in his name. Uh, we thank you for the men and women who will be serving as delegates and alternates to our convention. Uh, we pray, God, that as they make preparations, uh, that you would also grant them a safe journey to Buffalo and back home. Uh, bless our convention. May the work we do and the fellowship that we share uh, and also the communion that we will that will highlight our time together be a blessing not only to us, but to our churches as well. For the sake of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, this is the, uh, we're coming up to the 100th convention of the Eastern District. Just a few things before I proceed, kind of a this and that thing. Uh, if you would go to your, uh, your uh, toolbar, uh, mute yourself, first of all, mute yourself to el eliminate any kind of background noise uh, that might happen. Also turn off your video. Uh, that won't keep you from seeing uh, these, uh, these slides, but turn the, that off, that, that just helps with the bandwidth. We've never had any problems with it for these meetings. So uh, we hope it continues. And also, if you have any questions to ask later, for later, uh, just use the chat feature um, on this Zoom. Just hit the chat and you can send it to Lyle or you can send it to the whole group, but just type it in and we'll pick it up um, a little bit later, the, those questions that you have. So as I've been repeating over and over again, uh, the convention date and site is about a month away, about five weeks. It's going to be June 17th and 18th, a Friday and a Saturday. Uh, it'll be at First Trinity Lutheran Church on Niagara Falls Boulevard in Tonawanda, New York. Uh, the people of First Trinity, uh, they urged me to remind you that if you're using a GPS, don't type in First Trinity Lutheran Church on Niagara Falls Boulevard, type First Trinity. Don't type just Trinity. That's gonna, there's a lot of Trinities in the Buffalo area and you won't get to First Trinity. So it needs to be First Trinity Lutheran on Niagara Falls Boulevard if you're gonna be using that. Uh, this is the fourth of the, of the four uh, pre-convention gatherings of delegates and alternates. You can see the dates uh, for the previous meetings that we've had. The recordings of those are available to you on the convention website. Uh, I don't have the address, the letters here, but it's, it's on the district website, which is lcmsed.org. So www.lcmsed.org, Lutheran Church, Missouri, Senate Eastern District. Um, and just go to the tab on the top, which reads, 2022 convention and scroll down and you'll find the recordings there. So those are the various topics that we've had come a long way. It's hard to believe uh, this is our last one. <laughs> Time is flying. Tonight, we're moving ahead a bit more. So this is sort of like catching whatever is left in my mind. Uh, first, I'd like to go over the workbook with you very briefly and recommend certain pages to have in print in hand when you come to the convention, just a thought of those pages. Uh, and then also just a few comments on what's next, that is from tonight to the convention, what can you expect along the way? Uh, then what I call step-by-step, step, I don't, you know, I don't mean to uh, sound very, uh, very simple about that, but what do you do the moment you go through the doors at First Trinity? Where do you go? Where do you need to end up? Uh, just, just some of those very basics of, of the, uh, the floor plan of the building uh, from the moment you get in to the moment you sit down in your convention seat. And then I'm gonna go back one last time. And if you wanna bug out of this by this time, that's fine. But I want to go over the realignment one last time, just some brief comments about realignment. Uh, it's not going to be 
as detailed as explanation I gave in February. So if you want more detail, uh, some of the pluses and minuses that I see to realignment and how we can get around uh, some of the obstacles to realignment, uh, you'll have to go to the February meeting. So tonight, just a very brief comment. And I'd like to hear if you have any questions as well. So that, that it would be tonight. And again, just to look at what I'm expecting to do tonight. And at the end, like I have been doing in the past, uh, after the closing prayer and blessing, uh, you, can, you can go, but some of you might want to stay around for a Q&A. And again, if you have a question along the way over the next 30 minutes, which is about what this will take tonight, if you have any questions, use that chat feature and type it in. Uh, Lyle is with us and so is Bruce, and they're going to kind of monitor those questions as they come through. Or if you prefer to ask it at the end, uh, that would be perfectly fine too. So the convention workbook. I hope by now you at least found it on our website and that's how you receive it electronically. Uh, it is available uh, to all of you when you go to the website, the convention website and you, you click on the button for the convention workbook. This is the front page of the workbook and it, it goes from there nicely designed. I really appreciate the people who worked on that uh, Peter and Stephanie Johnson of Faith in Penfield. Uh, the workbook has eight sections. And in case you're, you're kind of looking at those things, there's a, quite a detailed table of contents, but there's a welcome section which will explain some of the specifics uh, for what you, you will need to need, what you will need to know of, along the way the directions, the name of the church, the name of the hotel, any costs, some of the details, um, emergency numbers uh, in case uh, you need help along the way or somebody needs to contact you. That's all under the welcome section, probably about 10 pages worth. Uh, uh, certainly take a look at that, but it kind of warms you up to the convention and the point of it. Then there's a, a larger section called administration and that's gonna have my reports and the reports of my staff here and there. Also uh, the reports from the circuit visitors, some comments on different uh, the congregations in our district and what they've been doing over the past couple of years. Uh, all that's under administration. Financial services, very brief, very pretty much an overview of year end and where we're at today. Uh, Lutheran Church Extension Fund, uh, some comments by Rick Porter from our office here. Then a nominations report. Uh, you'll, you'll find there's a chart as you open up that section. There's a chart of nominations uh, and it kind of explains the people and the offices they've been nominated to and we and um, an important page. Plus there's there's a lot of detail that that they that is the people nominated uh, they submitted to the workbook. So if you want to have a bit of an understanding, a background of who they are and some of their strengths, um, particularly for the Office of District President, I would encourage you all to read their vision statements. Uh, each of them has done very, very well. I really appreciate the work they put into it. So take a look at that, especially for District President. Uh, look at the section for the vision report, also the background information you know, on the three men uh, who are on the ballot. And that, that ballot number, by the way, is three. Uh, it, it's prescribed that way in our regulations uh, of the Synod, that the top three are, are the nominees, so others uh, are not considered. Uh, then after the nominations report, the next section is called overtures. Uh, we have two resolutions as of right now uh, that'll be presented to the convention. One resolution, resolution will be brought forward on Friday and the second will be on Saturday. And then a, a smaller section called correspondences and other reports and finally miscellaneous things as well. Uh, there's a very good resource page under the miscellaneous that has all kinds of, of websites that you can go to for various questions or resources for congregations. But I, uh, I know people here on the staff, they, they did a lot of work making sure that those links were all still uh, functioning and they hunted down the links and corrected things along the way, but really, really good material for congregations 
uh, to have at hand. So those are the eight sections of the workbook that you'll find. Uh, let's see, and the ninth section will be coming. And that will be available sometime in June before the convention. We call it the supplement. And the supplement simply will be any updates or corrections or new items, which doesn't appear at this point we have much at all. So I don't think this is gonna be a large section at all. But like I said, this will be available early in June, section number nine. Well, here's the question. <laughs> to print or not to print? And we've been asked that question a few times since the 160 page workbook has been put out there. It's a big workbook, but it contains a lot of terrific information that boy, I, I just hope our congregations, the delegates and alternates look through all of those pages. Uh, it, but it's a lot to print, I have to admit. Uh, but if you're like me, I like to have paper, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still a newspaper, I'm a book guy, uh, you know, more than reading things electronically, although that is part of life too. Uh, I like to have things in hand, and I do have the full workbook, and I'll have it with me at the convention. If you're one of those kind of guys or gals, uh, and you don't want to, you know, dry up the ink in your ma machine at home, try sending it to Office Max, and, and they'll do it at a cost, of course. Uh, or another possibility is you can download the workbook on, on a device and you can bring the device to the convention, but be aware that there really are no power sources for your use when you're sitting at the seat in your chair in the convention hall itself. So just be aware of that. I mean, there's plugs all over the place. You can, you can uh, power up in between here and there, but during the process of the convention, there just isn't going to be that availability to you. But you can bring the device with you on the convention for a device. That, by the way, is one of the standing rules of the convention. You can have your laptop if you wish. Okay, to print or not to print. Well, what if, uh, as people have been asking, what are the important pages that will be needed by our delegates during the convention? So I, I kind of thought this through. And if, if it were me, um, I would say these six things. Number one would be the convention schedule, but you don't need, really need to print that because we're going to put an updated uh, schedule in your folder that you will receive when you enter First Trinity for the convention. So you'll receive the, the schedule. Uh, there's one change, and I'm going to let you know right now, the only change that we have is, is that we originally were planning uh, to offer a shuttle service between the Marriott and First Trinity. Well, that's not going to happen. So we dropped that out of the schedule wherever that appeared, uh, but we're urging people to carpool, you know, between here and there because just the parking situation may be a little tight at First Trinity. But anyway, that convention schedule will be available for you at the convention. Uh, something you might wanna have in hand, it's you know, are the standing rules, which is page 12. That's one page. Uh, that's um, uh, that's a, a matter that we need to approve right at the beginning of our convention, the standing rules for the convention. So you might want to have that in front of you. Uh, you. You might, and I'm like, well, maybe, maybe not. You might want to have the standing committees, uh, which is pages 13 and 14 of your convention workbook in front of you. Again, the committees, uh, that needs to be approved by or received by the convention. Uh, and again, that's right at the very beginning, right after orientation, something we do. So it's sort of like you have the paper, you put it aside, you're done. Eh, maybe you might not want to do that, but here's something for you. Then uh, there is the, I call it the Congregational Nominations Comprehensive Report. And that will be updated if there are any updates. And we'll include that as well in your folder. Uh, there, there will not be substantial updates from what you have in your workbook. Uh, it's, it's that chart when you open up to the nomination section, there's a chart, it has the different offices and a grid that has the individuals who've been nominated to that office. That's what we're looking at. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, we only have, to my knowledge, there's only one person who has withdrawn his name 
from district secretary and from vice president in the Buffalo region. And I'll announce that at the convention, but that's the only change that we have at this point. So, you know, if, if you wanna bring that uh, out of the workbook, go ahead. Uh, you can always pencil in any changes along the way, or you can also just wait for the folder that you're gonna receive. And then the two overtures. And I think just the overtures themselves, you don't need all the supporting documents that follow, especially overture number one, there's a lot of material there. Uh, the circuits realignment uh, are, are three pages. And really the whereas is are only a few, it's the, uh, it's the circuits and what congregations are in, in, what, in each circuit. I, we've listed those things uh, through the uh, through the overture, so you could see that, and then at the end, it's kind of a, do we receive that? So it's it's three pages, pretty simple, but overtures are important. So you might you might want to have that in hand if you're not going to have your workbook. Uh, and then overture two are changes to our regulations, and in my opinion, these are cosmetic changes. Uh, the removal of a few phrases here and there is all there is. Uh, the supporting document that goes with that, you don't need that. Uh, that's the actual regulations of the Eastern District. And that goes on about 20, 25 pages. Uh, and, uh, but we wanted to include that so that you could see where in those regulations uh, we're looking to withdraw those four phrases. So that's overture number two, which is really pages 125 and 126. So I added it up and that's about 13 pages uh, that, that you might wanna have. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this page and, and we're gonna make it available to you um, on the convention website, um, you know, under this particular meeting, along with the recording of this meeting. So if you didn't get these down tonight, don't worry about it. It'll be available for you that way as well. Okay, so I hope that kind of helped you a little bit. So you don't have to bring 160 pages, 13 is a whole lot easier. So that, that takes care of the workbook section. Next one is, you know, what's next? Uh, what can you expect or what's happening here in the district office uh, for over the next five weeks or so? Well, next week's the big week, really. Uh, next week on the 17th, which I believe that is Wednesday, I believe. Uh, on uh, Somebody correct me if it's not Wednesday, maybe even Tuesday. Today is what, the 10th? So it'll, it would be Wednesday. No, today's Tuesday. <laughs> uh, general nominations close. And, uh, you know, and at this point, it's been very, very quiet. And I don't think we're going to see any nominations uh, between now and then. But that's when it officially closes. Also, any overtures from congregations uh, are submitted before the 17th of May for our consideration. So that closes as well. Uh, so that's next week, Tuesday, that happens. Next week, Friday, registration closes. So if you, uh, if you haven't gotten your registration in, boy, I, I would ask that you would, you would get to that as soon as possible and, and fill it out and send it in. Or you know somebody who didn't fill in the registration, please encourage that. Pastors too, you know, they, they need to be registered, uh, but, but do that. Uh, the reason we need that is we need numbers. We need the numbers for the hotel and for the banquet and for meals and, and ordering things like that. And, and uh, those businesses and companies, they, they have expectations of us too. So uh, we need to act because they want us to act. So if you can get that, that would be great. And if there are any payments of any that are due, uh, and if you don't know if any, if you're a delegate, you're, you come uh, at, at the expense of the Eastern District, and in others as well, if you are a retired pastor or commissioned minister, you come as well at the expense of the Eastern District. That includes the banquet and meals and, and other things and even lodging. So, uh, but others, uh, if a spouse is coming of a delegate, the, uh, the spouse has to pay. And I think it's about a total of $75. That is for the banquet and for the meals, lodging is free as well. So any questions, just simply call the district office, talk to Ruth, and we're here to help you out. So that that's May. Uh, then then is a jump, right? There's a jump to June 16th, which uh, I believe is a Thursday night, is the early arrivals to start to come to Buffalo, the Marriott, and settle in. Uh, and that night too, I just really urge you, if you're here, 
uh, there's going to be an organ and music festival at First Trinity that night, the site of our convention uh, at 7 p.m. This is going to be a really, really great event. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope if you're here to see you as well. So that's kind of what is next. So now, number three for tonight is the step-by-step. -step. You know, like I said, from the moment you walk through the doors at First Trinity to the time you get to your seat in the convention. So uh, I just, pictures of the, of the church. This is, uh, the lower picture is the main entrance to the church. And the upper picture to the upper right, that is the front picture from Niagara Falls Boulevard, the main, main thoroughfare uh, in front of, of the church. A uh, very busy area, very busy road. Uh, give yourself some time when you when you come over here, especially on Friday, 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 it's going to be something. But here's the back of the church, and you can see part of the parking lot, some of it. Uh, the main entrance, I'm just going to, again, I don't mean to take you in baby steps here, but I think it's probably the best. This is the main entrance. You can see there's a set of stairs. There's a slight slope and a sidewalk along the way, uh, either way. And here's the main entrance. Uh, I don't expect there's going to be much of a backup there because we're, we're going to have a number of people at the registration desks to, to help people get through. So I think what I'm going to do is most of my explaining is going to, going to be from this map. I think it's probably the best way for me to explain what's happening. When I said the rear view mirror of the uh, rear view uh, area of the church and the, and the main entrance, this is what we're talking about. Remember the steps were there. So this is the main entrance. Uh, there's a double set of doors, uh, and this is where you'll come in. Eventually, you're going to want to make your way over here to the gymnasium where the convention will take place. But what you do is we will have the registration table set right here as soon as you come through the doors. Uh, I believe the ladies are going to set it up uh, three rows according to alphabet. So, of course, go to where your alphabet last name is, and there you will receive a badge your convention badge with, uh, with, with also ribbons on them designating who you are. Uh, delegates receive a special color badge uh, so that I can see who the delegates are during the convention in case the delegates wish to be recognized to speak to the convention. So I need to see that others, um, others are, need special permission. But there's the registration table here. If you are not registered and your tag, your name tag is not here, uh, you will be uh, directed right over here, slightly over maybe about 15 feet where there is a desk. And that is a kind of a service desk where they can register you right there on the spot. They'll have the computer, they'll have the print badges ready to go for you as well. But we didn't want to back up uh, the people coming in at the registration table. We felt move the people, move the unregistered people over to the service desk. So this is the, the main area. It'll be a bit of a bottleneck, but I think it's going to be fine. Uh, now, what, what can you do? Well, depending on the time, remember the worship service is at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you have some time in this area here, I call it the narthex. Some people call it the vestibule. Uh, this area is fairly large. And this is where we'll have displays and vendors set up along the way. I don't know how the tables are going to be positioned. It doesn't matter, but there'll be probably six vendors here. Also, it's a place where you can get refreshments, uh, coffee, donuts, and probably cookies, those kind of things, or, or water. Uh, and that, that will stay here through the whole convention. So if you are looking for a coffee break or a stretch, uh, this is this is the way you'll you'll need to go uh, for that. So that would be here. So if you have time, maybe you might want to go this way. Uh, if not, you want to go right to your chair. You go to the right, and there's a, a slight hallway here, and then you go to the right in a long hallway, all the way down. Restrooms, by the way, there's a set here. There's a a hallway uh, down this way along the sanctuary. Um, and there's another set of restrooms right about here outside the gym or the convention hall right here. So you make your way uh, down the hallway 
And there'll be people and other vendors and displays set up right in this area here. Oops. Uh, let's get back. There we go. Um, and then you want to enter into the convention hall itself. Now, this will all be set up with tables and chairs. And this back section, there will be probably one of those cloth type curtains, uh, a barrier uh, between the back here and the convention hall itself. So, but right here, there will be a table or two. So that's the first thing you'll, you'll see when you go into the convention hall. There, you will present your credentials or come to the credentials table. They gotta get your count. They need to know that you're there. So go to the, the credentials table. And then from there, uh, Lyle Hegemeyer, who's with us and others will be there to hand you your electronic voting device. So you'll receive that. Uh, and I believe we're gonna be told that is in your possession through the day. Uh, you may need to hand those in at the end of the day so they can be recharged. I'm not sure, but we'll let you know. But anyway, when you come, you receive that, you, you hand in your credentials and you'll pick up your voting device, hold that voting device for dear life. It will be on a lanyard, I understand. So rather than putting in a pocket or a shirt pocket or laying it down someplace, you can just lay it on your neck along with your, your name tag as well. So you'll have both of those lanyards around your neck at that time. Uh, so that's that. Next thing you do, your, your name tag will have a table number. You are assigned to a table and each table has, um, Lyle, help me, I believe nine. it's- Thank you, nine, nine chairs, thank you. So the tables will be set up. Um, I don't know if you can see my, my cursor or not, we set up in this direction. So it'll be like, let's say set of tables one uh, number, but each table and there will be a, a, an aisle up, up the center. So table one will be on this side, table two, table three, four, odd number tables here, even numbers here. Just find your table. Each table will have nine chairs and you can pick and choose whatever chair you wish to do that. Uh, we are putting pastors generally together with their uh, with their lay uh, lay voters, uh, you know, unless we're told that they don't want to sit together, <laughs> which hasn't happened. So that's where you go, be facing in this direction. The convention platform will be uh, right around here. And then there'll be a couple of other tables as well. But that's where the tables are. So we ask that you you go to your assigned table and that is that is your seat, your table throughout the whole convention that we have. And, and that's how we begin. After you put your things down, if you have a laptop, it, it, you're, you're secure. It's not to worry about it because there'll be people there. We'll have security there um, as well who are will be um, plain clothes security. Uh, but you can leave those things there. And like I said, 10 o'clock, we have the opening worship. So you're gonna wanna head back uh, through the hall. You could go th this way is a, a cloak room but it's a very open space. So you can go this way and then right into the sanctuary for worship. And then following worship, which will be about 30 minutes, uh, we head back and go back to your seat. And uh, at a certain time, I think it's 11 o'clock, we begin with orientation, a very brief orientation for the convention. So that's kind of kind of the long and short of coming in and working the way about. During breakouts, there are two times when we're going to have breakout opportunities, education opportunities, um, we're going to be using three areas for the breakouts, just to point them out to you. And we'll, we'll have more specific maps for you in your folder when you get there. Here will be an area for breakouts. This is the library. Uh, you can see the library when you're walking this main hall back and forth. It's, it's uh, right up in this direction, a fairly good size room. So that'll be a breakout. Uh, another breakout, Bruce, correct me if I'm, if I'm not right here. Another breakout is in the sanctuary. Correct. Okay, thanks, Bruce. In the sanctuary, uh, we'll let you know which breakout will be in the sanctuary. And the third one, there are only three, you go down the stairs, 
here or the elevator. You could take the elevator in this section. So stairs or elevator and go down to the basement. And below the sanctuary is a, is a very nice room uh, that Trinity has put, the first Trinity has put together for the third breakout. And that room, by the way, downstairs from the sanctuary is one of the rooms you can go to to have your lunch. Uh, you'll be picking up box lunches at lunchtime and you can head anywhere in the building or outside the building, uh, but a nice place would be downstairs from the sanctuary, going down the stairs that way. So that, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, this building, we're, we won't be using at all. So this is, there's an old school. It's, it's now a preschool program for First Trinity. Uh, we'll be just using this section of the building, quite sizable, uh, plenty of room for a convention for us uh, as we kind of go along. All right, so that's what that looks like. And this is kind of a, uh, I kind of spelled out what I just told you, those things. So we are um, at point number four for tonight. And this is, this is the last point I, I wanna bring to your attention. Again, I did talk about this back in February. So, you know, feel free to come and go uh, at this point, it won't hurt my feelings, but I just wanted to this kind of, Go ahead. I, I'm going to interrupt before somebody may leave. Uh, just two questions. Our one question and one uh, point of advice or word from First Trinity. Uh, the point of advice was to download the workbook in advance. First Trinity does not have sufficient bandwidth for 120 nominees or uh, delegates to start trying to download simultaneously the workbook. Okay. And then uh, the question was, Will president nominees have opportunity to speak and or answer questions before the election? Now, the answer is no. Uh, the, according to our regulations and the way we go about this, there is a vision statement. So I would read the vision statement and I would read the background information about them. Also, if you're a, if you are a lay delegate, talk to your pastor or other pastors about the men. Uh, you know, they more or less have... Are, have there's knowledge of these three men throughout the district. And, uh, and so that's the opportunity that we have. All right, so, so Lyle, that's it then, those two questions? All right, let's then jump now to realignment. Uh, there is a proposal from the board of directors that we realign the visitation circuits. And that's what the resolution or the overture will read. It's, it's to realign the circuits. And there's a reason why they are suggesting that. But in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, we have two types of circuits. One circuit's called visitation, the other's called electoral. The visitation circuits are the ones we ordinarily talk about. Whenever your pastor, let's say, when he goes to a, calls it a circuit meeting, it's to his visitation circuit. Uh, visitation circuits are a cluster of congregations uh, together in a specific region or an area of our district. Uh, electoral, so that would be that. Also visitation circuits have a circuit visitor, uh, the circuit visitor. So, um, so those are your, your visitation circuits. And these circuits are the ones that ordinarily operate over the three years between convention and convention. They normally operate. However, uh, once every three years, the electoral circuits are called together in order to elect representatives to the Synod Convention. These electoral circuits will meet before October 1 this year. Uh, there will be a call for these meetings coming up. So electoral circuits. These two are kind of linked in a lot of ways, which causes a lot of confusion to people. And that's why I'm going through this again. It's very easy to, to misunderstand what's kind of going on here. So let me go a little bit deeper. Uh, a visitation circuit is a cluster of congregations walking together. They have a circuit visitor. They're established along geographical criteria and they're set by the district. So, so there you have it. And that's what we're doing, where the board of directors is bringing the topic to you 
uh, they're recommending we reset or we realign our circuits uh, for, for lots of reasons. However, electoral circuits, they, they are defined by the Senate. And there's lots of history and reasons behind this. And there's lots of talk about changing these criteria, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about electoral circuits. Right now, an electoral circuit is seven to 20 congregations in number, and they have to have an aggregate communicant membership of no less than 1,500, no more than 10,000. And, and that's where we're having a lot of difficulty in our district. Uh, just meeting this minimum number uh, or this minimum number as well. We're having difficulty uh, with that. So what, what we need to do, um, just to explain, visitation circuits are understood to be electoral circuits when the time comes for them to elect representatives to the Senate convention, provided the visitation circuit is more than seven or above or less than 20 and has more than 1,500, less than 10,000. If a visitation circuit meets that criteria, that visitation circuit is an electoral circuit. You know, for the purposes of electing or selecting your representatives to the Senate convention in 2023. So visitation circuits, if they meet the criteria, become the electoral circuits. And this is where our difficulty is. As things stand today, we have 16 visitation circuits in our district. Only three right now qualify as electoral circuits, only three out of the 16. So what do you do? Okay, so then you have, you have 13 other circuits that do not qualify. Well, what we need to do and we would be your board of directors, we would have to combine uh, the circuits together so that two circuits together would meet this criteria. So for example, Philadelphia and Susquehanna, uh, if you're from that area of Pennsylvania, those two circuits, we would have to combine because they don't meet the criteria, neither of them do we'd have to combine them in order to form one electoral circuit. So two become one. We do that with Pittsburgh. Uh, the two Pittsburgh South circuits, Southeast, Southwest, we combine them. Pittsburgh North, we have to do that as well. Pittsburgh Northeast, Northwest, we have to combine them. Uh, Lake Shore and Cattaraugus, we combine for the same reason. You get the story. Uh, we have, uh, just to explain to you why, the board feels this is necessary. We, we have um, three circuits, three visitation circuits that have only six congregations in them. They have only six, so they do not qualify as an electoral circuit. One of those congregations has our largest congregate, one of those, cir one of those circuits has our largest congregation and that congregation alone has enough numbers to be two circuits. <laughs> so, you know, so you, you get this disproportion, you get this moving things around. Um, is it representative? Is it right? So this is the difficulty. We only have three. Uh, the other 13 would have to combine. And, and we've looked over the numbers, uh, just projecting if, if, this, if this realignment fails, which it could, if it fails, the board of directors would have to combine circuits and it would appear uh, that we would have no more than 11 electoral circuits, the very number that we're probably going to have with this realignment. If approved, what will happen if the reconfiguration or realignment, sorry, if it's approved, uh, we'll reduce the number of our visitation circuits from 16 to 11, and that's really the proposal. Um, but then it'll also secure 11 visitation circuits to be 11 electoral circuits. So the numbers uh, would, would match the requirements of Synod. The visitation circuits would meet that criteria, would meet this criteria. The 11 would meet that, 
then they become electoral circuits. Problem solved, uh, things are done. Now, there, there are pluses and minuses, as you can imagine, like anything. And uh, we could talk about that at the convention. Uh, if, you, if you look back or, or at the uh, presentation that I made back in February, I kind of went through some of those difficulties. Uh, people are kind of concerned about how large uh, geographically these circuits will become and, uh, and things like that. And, and there, were, there were some possible uh, solutions to that. So there's really nothing that, that we can't get around and, and cannot uh, take care of with just a, a little bit of, of, uh, of ingenuity along the way. So that's if it passes. If it doesn't pass, it's no skin off my nose. We'll just kind of go back to what we've been doing and and your board of directors then will they're going to reduce us to 11 uh, to 11 uh, electoral circuits uh for the next convention we said that's how it appears to me so a link to the recording of this evening's gathering is going to be on the website and you can see that's under the 2022 convention tab. Uh, the, these PowerPoint slides are also presented there uh, if you'd like to take a look at it. Here's the topics that we covered tonight. And I hope that was helpful to you. I do and have with... one more question now, Chris. Okay, go ahead. If, if you would, and it relates to uh, the circuit realignment, can you make a comment on the caucus A and caucus B on the schedule? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Really, those are meaningless to you at this point as, as delegates. Those will become an issue whether or not this proposal of realignment passes. If the, if the proposal fails, uh, I will call for caucuses A, that, uh, that arrangement. So congregations will caucus according to A, they'll cluster according to their, uh, to their circuits. If the alignment passes, then we will use caucus column B. So things switch around a little bit for congregations as well. So more about that at the convention. Um, really seriously, nothing that you need to know at this point going into it, you know, unless you wanna see if you want to see where your congregation would be in terms of other congregations, if if it passes, then look at look at caucus B. Look under that column, find your congregation. You'll get an idea of what circuit you would be in. Yeah, so we're trying to do everything in advance to call to eliminate any mass confusion which would obviously happen at the convention. It's like cats, right? The, the old thing, herding cats. Uh, if, if I tell people just go and find your, your circuit and meet with your circuit visitor, just like that, can you imagine just the, the mayhem? <laughs> so uh, the, these sheets, which, which tell our congregations where they go under what caucus, under what number, hopefully that'll avoid some of that. Okay, so it's... Um, it's about time. Let's let's close with prayer and a blessing. And uh, excuse I'll me, get, Chris. Uh, we go ahead. we have, have two prayer requests before you close. Okay. If you would pray for Jim Birch's wife, Teresa. Okay. Who had knee replacement. Oh. Okay. And then also for Pastor Ron Spray, who had a kidney transplant. He did. And he's doing fine. I spoke with him a couple of days ago. I couldn't believe how chipper he was the day after his kidney transplant. It was amazing. So let's pray. Gracious God, uh, once again, we just give you thanks uh, for your love and your care for us and your people. Uh, you have taken away our sins in Jesus Christ. You have given us uh, eternity to come and the joy of being your people here in the church. Uh, we pray this night, especially for special needs in our district. Uh, we pray for uh, Teresa Birch as she recovers from her knee surgery. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good long road, but uh, there's, a, there's this better strength, we pray, uh, that, she will, uh, that she will receive and enjoy in time to come. We also pray for Ron Spray, uh, that you would help and speed his recovery uh, as he is in Cleveland Clinic after kidney transplant. Uh, we also uh, 
pray uh, for the family of, uh, of Ron Ginter, uh, who was uh, retired out of, out of St. Paul, Batavia. Ron was called to heaven last weekend. And uh, even though we're still waiting for funeral plans, uh, we ask that you would be with Bernie and with the family. And also for Pastor Alex Knowles, uh, who lost his father at the end of last month, uh, he, who lived in Florida. Uh, Pastor Knowles was in Angola. Uh, be with him and, and Susan, his wife and family as well. Keep them strong ever in the promise of the resurrection and life to come in eternity. Uh, these we turn to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. With that, I'm going to stop the share. And if you want to uh, turn your video back on, and Mike, feel free to do that. If you want to go, go ahead. But I'm just going to keep it open for a few minutes to see if there are any other questions or comments by anyone. I'm just hoping this convention will be, a, in addition to doing business, which is always part of a convention, but also that it's just going to be a time for people to get together as a district face to face and shake hands once again in fellowship. Uh, this uh, it's been a long time coming, you know, with COVID and having to been separated. Uh, this is the the single, uh, the single one. This is the one event of all the years in our district that our congregations and workers can all get together at one time. So uh, we're, we're trying to make the most out of it uh, to make this as an enjoyable and wonderful time for everyone. So look, it's looking good. And don't forget the concert at First Trinity on Thursday night, Thursday, that'll be June 16th at 7 p.m. Anyone, any questions or comments? I do, I have a question. Um, when we were talking about the, um, the uh, facility for the convention, um, those who are bringing spouses, uh, where would they be able to be accommodated during the convention? Um, and would they also be able to attend the breakouts? Well, that's a great question. And boy, I, my apology for not mentioning that. The convention hall has enough room in the back where there will be tables and chairs uh, for guests. So if your spouse, if she, if she wishes to come to the convention and sit through that, she's more than welcome to stay there. She can mingle, walk around uh, the building as well. And yes, she is absolutely welcome to go to the breakout sessions. Uh, I would ask that when you register, uh, there is a place that calls for your spouse's name and meals and also the choice of her of the breakout. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're asking people to attend the breakout that they choose, but, you know, you're, you, you're really not, you're not mandated to go uh, to breakout A if you want to go to breakout B. But, but if she could, if she could uh, select one, this way we have a head count uh, for the presenter as well. But absolutely, uh, she's more than welcome. Also, uh, we're, we're going to have uh, information about what to do, where to go around Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Uh, if, if she knows someone that they wanna uh, take off for a couple of hours and, and, and see a site or so. So that'll be available as well. Thank you. Well, very good, everyone. Good to see all of you. Thank you for your time. I'll look forward to seeing you in June. Thank you. <clears throat>